Hi kids, a salute to you and a salute to your carers too. I'm Wanda the Warrior and it's so exciting to be back with you again today as we look a bit more into the story of King David. Wanda the Warrior is brave and strong She'll fight for God's justice and against the wrong She'll be with you when the fight is long She'll be there to save the day She's the keeper of the peace, the help for those in need She'll never abandon you So let's be brave warriors too And see what good that we can do So kids, as we've learned about the story of King David It's been very exciting, hasn't it? We've seen how David became king How God used him to save the Israelite people We've seen how King Saul became so jealous of David that he wanted to kill him, but also how, despite having lots of opportunities to kill Saul, David refused and waited for God to keep his promise and to make him king. Well, today is our last time looking at King David, and one of the things we're going to be looking at is God's amazing ability to forgive us even when we do truly terrible things. And we've got someone very special coming and helping us to learn about this today. Hi, Tunde. Hi, Wanda. Thank you very much. I hope you've been keeping well. Right, hi kids. I hope you guys have been keeping well too. I know for the past five weeks, we've been looking at the story of David. And um, I know in week one, we started out with um, how God anointed David while he was still young, a young shepherd. And we see how God, you know, used him to de defeat um, Goliath. And of course, how Saul, King Saul, became very, very jealous and very, very angry and wanted to kill him. But God wouldn't let that happen because God was with him. Um, and then we also saw how God then established David as a king in Israel. And of course, how he wanted to build a temple for God. But God said, I'll make you a promise instead. I'll make your descendants um, be on the throne of the kingdom of Israel forever. And of course, we saw uh, or we know how um, that promise, of course, was fulfilled in Jesus Christ, who, of course, is the king of kings and is the ultimate king. So today we're going to look at um, another aspect of David's life, which is something I know that we can all learn from. And it's a story of uh, God's forgiveness, God's kindness and God's love. So we're going to be looking at 2 Samuel chapter 11 and um, chapter 12. But can I ask, before we start, could you pause the video, grab your Bibles, and of course, try and read chapter 11 and 12, because then it will be easier when we talk through it. So I'll give you an opportunity to do that now. Good. And before we start, can I just say a quick word of prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, help us to understand your word today. Help us to understand the story of David, how he was a, a great king, but despite that, he still had his own faults, and you were able to help him to understand the errors of his way, and he was able to make adjustments, and he asked for forgiveness, and you did forgive him. And we ask, Lord, that you help us. And you forgive us all our sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Shall we begin? Okay. So at the beginning of the um, chapter 11, um, David was supposed to be out fighting battles. He was supposed to be out helping his people um, to win wars. But he wasn't doing that. He was being lazy. And that was the first mistake he made. He was being lazy. He wasn't doing what he ought to do when he should have been doing it. So he stood back and he was enjoying himself in the palace. And that, of course, led to him seeing a beautiful woman whose name, of course, is Bathsheba. And he desired her and wanted her to be his. And we know that he actually did eventually. But, of course, this was very, very wrong. What he did really was to commit adultery. And adultery really is, you know, taking somebody else's wife as your own when you shouldn't be doing that. And he didn't stop there. Despite committing adultery, he 
decided to cover up what the consequence of that adultery and the consequence was Bathsheba became pregnant and King David didn't want people to know that he was the one responsible for that so he decided to call back Bathsheba's husband from the war and Bathsheba's husband of course was Uriah and he said Uriah come back and be with your family be with your wife but Uriah was a man of integrity he wouldn't do that because his fellow soldiers were out in battle they were fighting this fierce war and he wouldn't be caught being at home staying at home and relaxing while his fellow soldiers were fighting so he said he said to himself I'm not going to do that and then he slept at the entrance of the palace he didn't go home and then when King David was told that this was what Uriah did, he felt, oh no, this plan is not going to work. Instead of King David then admitting what he had done was wrong, it's, he looked for another way to cover up his sin. And you know what he did? He asked Uriah to be put in the fiercest part of the battle. And we know what happened to Uriah. Uriah was killed. But the sad part was King David knew what he was doing he knew if Uriah was placed in that part of the battle that he was going to end up dead and that was what happened now King David thought oh good finally my plan has worked and then he decided to make Bathsheba his wife and we all know why he did that again so that he wouldn't be shamed because he took Bathsheba as his wife when really he shouldn't have Bathsheba was another person's wife or was another man's wife and we can see how what started out as being lazy ended up with killing another man for his wife which is a terrible thing that David did and David actually thought he gotten away with it and we see this was David a man after God's heart it did this terrible, terrible thing. But we will learn later on that actually God forgave him. Why? Because he asked for forgiveness. And that's a lesson for us, kids. No matter what we do, no matter how terrible the thing that we have done is, if we ask God for forgiveness, he will always, always forgive us. So, after David had made Bathsheba his wife, God sent Nathan the prophet to him and Nathan told him this parable about a rich man who took what a poor man had the only lamb a poor man had he took it and he prepared it for a visitor now the rich man could have taken out of his own stock because he had plenty of cows he had plenty of lambs but he didn't do that he took what didn't belong to him and when David heard about this story, he was really furious. He was really, really mad. He said, how can this happen? This person deserved to die. He deserves to pay four times over what he had done. And then Nathan told him, you are the person I'm referring to. And then the penny dropped. And then David realized, oh yes, this is me. What terrible thing I have done. And he was really, truly repentant at that point. And he asked God for forgiveness. And Nathan said, don't worry, God will forgive you. God has said he's going to forgive you because we have a truly forgiving God. But the consequences of your sin will not go. All right. And then he said, the child will not live. And there will always be somebody who is trying to take your kingdom away from you. And that was the consequence of, his kid, of, of, of David's sin. Why? Because he was lazy. He didn't go into battle when he had to have gun. He committed adultery. And he didn't just stop there. He even killed Bathsheba's wife. He had him killed. Which is very, very wrong. But God, being a loving and kind God, said, I will forgive you. And he did forgive David. And we know what then happened. We know Bathsheba then became pregnant again. And she gave birth to a son called Solomon. We all know about King Solomon. How he was 
very, very wise. And he became one of the best king Israel ever had. And that's also in some way tells us that we, sometimes we might be good, but sometimes we do very bad things. Say for instance, you're running around the house despite being warned by mommy and daddy that you shouldn't be running across the house. And then something happened, a glass falls on the floor and, and breaks. And instead of you saying, I'm sorry, you pass the blame. Oh, it was my brother or my sister that was chasing me and that was why this glass broke. It's important for us to understand that when we've done something wrong, for us to say that we are sorry. And especially when, we, when we've done something wrong in God's eyes, we need to tell God we are sorry. And you can see the difference between David and Saul. They both did terrible things, but Saul, Saul wasn't repentant. He passed the blame. But David, David was repentant. David said that he was sorry. He knew what he had done was wrong. And he really and truly repented. And he served God all the days of his life. So, the important thing for us to remember, kids, is we have a very loving God. Who will always forgive us our sins. As long as we come to him and ask him to forgive us. Trust me, he will always forgive. I hope you've enjoyed today's story and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Take good care of yourself. Bye. Thanks so much, Tunde, for helping us to understand uh, all about how God can forgive us no matter what we have done. Isn't it wonderful to know that although we should always try and follow God and we should always seek to do what is right and good, that if we truly come to God and are truly sorry for the things that we have done wrong, we know that he will always forgive us. And we saw that today in our story from the story of King David. I hope that you guys have enjoyed uh, looking at King David over the last few weeks. We really miss you at Christchurch and I really hope that you're you and your family are staying safe and are enjoying your summer holidays. We've got some more activities that you can do at home now. Um, so please get your carers to click on the links below. Um, we'd love to see what you get up to and we'd love to know how you're doing in lockdown, even though we can't be together very often at the moment. So please ask your parents and carers to uh, take pictures of you and the pictures that you draw and the things that you get up to and if they'd like to put them on social media with the hashtag CCL still together so that we can all enjoy being together even though we can't be physically together at the minute. See you guys soon! <laughs>